what Africa gives to the world, Europe don't have it, America don't have it, Asia don't have it. As a first lady, I am not part of a government system. So when I speak, I speak on behalf of the people because I understand what the people are going through. At the end of the day, I'm not being paid salary and I cannot be fired either. We cannot wait for other people to come and develop us. Every mining company that is in Sierra Leone today is owned by a foreigner. You cannot be coming to our country and take everything that will make us develop and then you still treat us as inferior people as if we don't know what we're doing. The sense about us celebrating independence, I don't know why we're celebrating independence because we are not. Meet Miss Fatima Madabao, the first lady of Sierra Leone, a comely and cultured woman with an extraordinary perspective bearing and unwavering allegiance to our country and people. One of the most fundamental corruptions of the social contract in human history is colonialism. Yeah. And it's that mechanism that some states have used to extract resources from other places, such as Sierra Leone. That deprives countries of the resources they need for government services, for education, for health. So I was hoping you could reflect a little bit on what those forces have done to Sierra Leone and what kind of accountability we might be able to think about just to imagine a way forward from where we've begun now. When you, you look at what Sierra Leone have to offer, when you come to our mineral resources, the kind of mineral resources we have in our country is enough to take care of everybody in that country. We should not have a single poor person in Sierra Leone. But unfortunately, we are not given the free will to make decisions on our own mineral resources. There's always Big Brother who decides and when you fight and say no we are not going to do this they use the system to stop you it's either they set you up with the opposition and they will be supporting the opposition against you from the back or they cause unnecessary chaos in your country so that you are not able to even govern your own people they will do things to make you not to uh, be functionable. And of course, any country that don't have peace cannot develop. You have to have peace before you talk about development. I'll give you a simple example about Sierra Leone. Every mining company that is in Sierra Leone today is owned by a foreigner. Every mining company. If it's not the Chinese, it's the American, it's the British our electricity, Bumuna, is run by the British. And we still don't have light. We're looking for light, electricity. If you don't have electricity, how can you talk about education? How can you talk about health facility? How can you talk about improving the infrastructure of your country? We don't have electricity. Now, do we actually even have proper water, pipe bone water? so that our kids will not be sick. We don't have those facilities. Why? With all the minerals we have, there is a cap you put. Before my husband became the president of Sierra Leone, Sierra Leone was benefiting. They said, uh, what's the word? 0.000.1%. What is that? Basically, a company can take as much as 100 million dollars out of the country in terms of minerals and then they can just give the country ten thousand dollars now what will ten thousand dollar do for our health system what is ten thousand dollar do for our educational system and these are the things i believe that are stopping africa from progressing we don't have a say the sense about us celebrating independence, I don't know why we're celebrating independence, because we are not free. That is my own take. I'm not speaking also on behalf of the government of Sierra Leone, nor am I speaking on behalf of His Excellency the President. I am speaking as Fatima, as a citizen of a country who believes that things need to change. Where do we go from here? Do you have any practical ideas about where we might start? or collective ideas that we might gain support for? I feel Africa, we, patriotism is very important. You have to love your country to want your country to be a better place. Patriotism, I think we need to be, we have to have that sense of patriotism in our countries. And um, 
our leaders also should be subjected to that you know it is not only when uh, you were talking about election and then everybody come out and celebrate and after election that's it accountability who accounts for what is happening who is the one who is changing the narrative of what is happening like i said as a first lady i am not part of a government system i am a wife of a president so when i speak i speak on behalf of the people because i understand what the people are going through at the end of the day i'm not being paid salary so and i cannot be fired either <laughs> so that's the, the the advantage that's the advantage of being a first lady but i believe that for africa what is happening in africa today it need to change and it need to change now there is no time like now because for sierra leone we now have a president who believe that we cannot wait for other people to come and develop us we cannot wait for another country to come and prescribe how our country should be run or what we need in our country you know this divide and rule if you're close to china we will not come to your country if you are close to america we will not come to your country i mean the fight that is between england europe america china russia is not a sierra leone fight that's not our problem. We are fighting for our daily bread. We are looking to have education, just like America. We are looking to have good health facility, just like Europe. We are looking to have governance structure where a, one single person cannot be the dictator of a nation. That's what we are looking for. And in that process, we are going to be allies to everybody who wants us to grow. But if we now align ourselves with someone and then this other person now is feel offended that, oh, you know, I'm, I'm coming from China now. I flew in, I mean, I've gone around the world to get to Boston, you know. I went to China and then come here. I will, before here, I went to England and then flew into America. For me, I am not restricted where I should go or who I should be talking to. I am going around the world to see a country that sees Africa not as uh, uh, an, not just as an ally of what you will be getting from us, but a country that sees Sierra Leone as partners and treat us with respect. You cannot be coming to our country and take everything that will make us develop and then you still treat us as inferior people as if we don't know what we're doing. I think that is wrong. You know, we're looking for partners that value us. People that will come to our country and say, you know what, this country has suffered enough. They need to grow. We were once the atom of Africa. Every country within sub-Sahara Africa used to come to Sierra Leone for our education. And today, what can we be proud of? We cannot talk about education in Sierra Leone because they've ruined that for us. Everything that has empowered Sierra Leone has been ruined. And now we have a leader who wants to fix everything. There is a problem. In Africa, you should not have a leader that is assertive, a leader that knows what his people want, a leader that wants to change the, what is happening. The moment you have that, it's everyone's target. And then they find reason to slow you down, they find reason to stop you, and they use that system of corruption. They use corrupt people, they use negative people, they use unpatriotic citizens to come after a government who is doing what is right for a system. I think we need to address those issues. Unfortunately, I don't know who I, who, I mean, um, I'm very good at name calling, but at the moment, I don't know who I should be screaming at. I think. The way you've started on working on reform for women and girls is a template that can be followed for many other issues. Do you think of what a next one might be? What they, I mean, one of the most serious issues I have with the United Nations is the fact that um, Africa, Africa is not part of the Security Council. Hmm. <laughs> We're talking about 52 countries, 54 countries, I'm sorry. 54 countries, a whole continent does not have one person representing Africa when it comes to decision making at the Security Council. And I'd observe also that 
no African country has its own executive director at the World Bank either. No, unfortunately, yes. we don't know how to manage money. <laughs> I, I think I'll have to disagree with you. And what, what, think, what, yeah. what do you want me to say? Because think, if that is the perception <laughs> since the beginning of, you know, every time an African come forward for something that they have to be a decision maker for the world, not just African, mm. it's just not possible. I understand. So what can I say? There must well, be a prescription somewhere that says, <laughs> Africa, you are not good enough. Well, it might be revolutionary, but I'm going to say it right here. Africans should be in charge of Africa. I believe that also that Africans' issue can only be enhanced when Africans decide to do that. They should not allow another person to give them a prescription of how Africa should look like or what we need in our Africa because we know what we need in our Africa. No one will know that better than us. And I think the, the UN should see Africa as partners. And the United Nations, definitely, you cannot have seven countries vetoing everything. When it comes to Africa issue, it is those seven countries. Who are the countries that are actually exploiting Africa? They're the ones who have the veto power to make decision on anything that has to do with Africa. So for me, I think that is wrong. And that is one thing the president of Sierra Leone has campaigned for. And this year, Sierra Leone is now a non-permanent member at the United Nations. But yet still, we don't have a veto power. But we're there. At least we are, com we are getting closer. And in these two years, our mission is to get the United Nations to see Africa not as one country. Because that's the mistake they do. When you say I'm from Africa, they say, oh, you're from Nigeria. I said, no, Nigeria is one country in Africa. <laughs> you know, we have 54 countries in Africa. So see us as a continent that also we, we, what we offer to the world, Europe does not have it. What Africa gives to the world, Europe don't have it, America don't have it, Asia don't have it. Because we are not mining in China, we are not doing any mining in America or mining in Europe. But they are doing it in every part of Africa. Not just Sierra Leone, go to Democratic Republic of Congo, go to the Botswana, go to Angola, go everywhere there is mineral resources. It is the West and the Chinese who are. Meet Miss Fatima Madabao, the first lady of Sierra Leone, a comely and cultured woman with an extraordinary perspective bearing an unwavering allegiance to her country and people. She personifies something other than glamour and drama. She is an embodiment of African womanhood, a politician, an actress, a writer, a human rights advocate. Her office has embarked on many programs but all geared towards human capital development with emphasis on women's empowerment and protecting our children. Her strength lies in her willingness to sacrifice all for the sake of the betterment of our people. Fatima Madabao, born 27 November 1980, known simply as Fatima Bao, is a Sierra Leonean former actress, screenwriter, and film producer who has served in the role of First Lady of Sierra Leone as the wife of President Julius Madabao since 2018. As an actress, Bao participated in various Nollywood movies projects as well as other acting projects in the United Kingdom. She is from Sierra Leone's Kono District in the southeastern part of the country. However, part of her heritage is Gambian. Fatima was born in Kodu, Kono District, to Tinganike and Umajabi on 27 November 1980. Her mother is Leonean and her father is Gambian. She was raised in a Muslim family and remains a devout Muslim herself. She grew up in Kono and attended primary school at the Ansaru Islamic School. She later went to St. Joseph Convent Secondary School in Freetown. She holds the Bachelor of Art and Honors degree in Performing Art from the Roamte Institute in London. She also earned a Bachelor of Art degree in Journalism at the University of Art, London College of Communication in 2017. Prior to her marriage to Mada Bao, Fatima had a successful career in the entertainment industry under her maiden name, Fatim Jabi. She began working in the African film industry when she was in London. She wrote and acted and produced Nollywood films, including Battered Shameful Deceit, Mr. Ibu in Sierra Leone, Expedition Africa, and The Soul. She stayed in the film Mirror Boy and won the Best Supporting Actress at the 2011 Safa Awards. In 2013, she won the Pan-African Woman of the Year from All African Media. And in 2013, she earned a Best Female Actress at the African Oscars in Washington, D.C. 
The same year, she won the Gathering of African Best Award for promoting a positive views of Africans around the world. Bao is a patron of a number of charities in the UK, including the John Utaka Foundation, which helps African children and young people cope with health challenges. Thank you for watching. Do not forget to like, share, and subscribe. Until next time, cheers and have a good one.